السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین وعلى آلہ واصحابہ اجمعین اما بعد ان اللہ و ملائکته یسلون على النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلموا تسلیما اللہم صلی و سلم دائما ابدا ابدا علا حبیبی کا خیر خلقی محمد و آلہ و اصحابی و اہل بیتہ و اطرتی و بارک و سلم تسلیما کثیرا کثیرا Respected brothers and sisters and all the community members and my dearest children I would like to welcome everyone to Alhamdulillah lesson number 25 we have, mashallah, reached a quarter century today. Um, lesson number 25 in the weekly series of uh, Siratul Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, so far we have covered <coughs> all the aspects of the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu all the way up to where he started his mission as a prophet. And this is where the, the tough circumstances started coming in front of him. It seems that as soon as he started uh, after the second revelation, Ya ayyuhal muddassir, hum fa'anzir wa rabbaka fa'kabbir, where Allah Ta'ala is requesting Rasulullah Sallallahu to get up and start giving the glad tiding, talking about the greatness of Allah Ta'ala, and also warn them of the consequences of disobedience. So when he started this, this is when he was confronted with the toughest part of his life. In fact, uh, although he was accepted, as we have learned, as Sadiqul Amin, he was a well-respected, honorable, honest, trustworthy person in the Quraysh. And obviously he belonged to the, the most noblest of all the tribes of Quraysh. Uh, but still, when he started the mission of talking towards Allah Ta'ala, uh, and ulama, they say that uh, this is the important thing to note, that when a person will sincerely start making the effort for deen and Islam, then he will definitely be confronted with the obstacles and difficult time. And one should not be afraid of that, because that is the actual sunnah of all the previous prophets we find that whenever they started, then the first opposition was from the family. And then others came in. Uh, but uh, we find that in the beginning, the, the people who were coming into the fold of Islam, they were the slaves and low class people who were mostly working for uh, these big leaders, the Kuffar and Mushrikeen, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, uh, uh, and their families. Uh, they used to have the slaves, and they started coming into the fold of Islam. And we, if we look at the history, we find uh, how the Kuffar and Mushrikeen uh, they confronted Rasulullah Sassim in different ways. Right. Initially, uh, they went to the uncle, who was obviously the, the, the leader of all, uh, the most noblest of the tribe, uh, son of Abdul Muttalib, and well respected in the, in the entire uh, Quraysh, um, you know, uh, all the tribes respected him. But when that, nothing happened with that, 
Then they, as I mentioned in my last lesson, they selected a, a person, Utbah, Abul Walid, Utbah bin Rabia, and he was a very learned and educated person. And they asked him that uh, you should go and talk to him. And he said, just leave it to me. And uh, when he came and he offered everything to Rasulullah Sassam, as we mentioned, that he offered the, uh, uh, you know, the kingdom, he offered the leadership, he offered wealth, and he offered women, all the things which are required to, if they are misused in the, in the, in the world, they become the means of uh, creating corruption in the world. So he offered all of them and he said, look, we can give you, we are ready to make you our leader. We are ready to hand over Makkah to you. But you have to leave calling towards one Allah. Because that was something which was hurting them the most. Uh, that uh, something which was against the religion of their forefathers. And, uh, you know, this is what Abu Jahl you know, uh, said that we are, we are ready to accept 10 kalimats which you are telling us, which will make us the leaders in Arab and Ajam. But when they heard the La ilaha illallah, this oneness of Allah Ta'ala, that was something which we, they could not understand or accept. Right? So that the oneness of Allah Ta'ala, because they were worshipping so many idols. Uh, and uh, from centuries, from their forefathers, they were, it was continuing, so they were not ready to accept that. So that also did not work. Uh, Othubak went back when Rasulullah Sallallahu we learned in the last uh, lesson number 24, that when Uduba offered everything, Rasulullah Sassam kept quiet and did not reply. And it gives us the rule that uh, when you know you are confronted with trick questions and, and uh, questions where uh, it's difficult to answer, the best option is to remain silent. Uh, so Rasulullah Sassam remained silent, and when he had finished. Then he started reading Surah Fussilat, Surah Hamim Sizda. Hamim, Tanzilum, Mina Rahman, Rahim, Kitabun Fussilat, Ayatuhu, Quran, and Arabi, Ali, Homi, Alamun. And this, this, this Surah is, you know, we should try and read and try to understand. This shows the Khudrat of Allah Ta'ala. And of course, coming from the, uh, the mouth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know. So you can imagine the impact, which, he, you know, the, uh, Utba was uh, stunned to hear the, the Quran, the tilawat of the Quran. And, you know, it, it was something which was beyond him. He, he had not heard before. And, and he, he actually, you know, the, the people were waiting for him. These big leaders, you know, Abu Jahl, Utba, Abu Lahab, they were all waiting. And they, they said that, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's something wrong when he's coming back. And they see him. Uh, and he went back to them and, and he said to them, yeah, that today, listen to me. And you can do whatever you like afterward. Listen to me. Leave this person alone. Right? And because what he is saying, I could not understand anything. And Abu Jahl, he, he, uh, he taunted him and he said, you are such an educated person and learned man and someone was speaking to you in Arabic and yet you say you, you did not understand him. So he said that what he read, it, you know, I've heard, I've heard the Kalam of Shu'ara and I've heard the kalam of uh, Kahanat and Seher, you know, uh, the fortune tellers and magicians and, and, and enchanters. But this kalam which he's reading, it is something beyond that. You know, it's, it's, so so this, uh, this incident 
fell flat on the faces of the of the disbelievers and mushrikeen and then they said well what what is the next step for us There's, what should we do and meanwhile so then they started uh, creating problems and punishing the the muslims who were coming into the fold of islam and we learned also that uh, you know how they they started uh, um, creating problems for like uh, Hazrat Bilal, you know, he was dragged through the streets. Hazrat Khabbab bin Arad, he was actually put on burning charcoals. And the first shahadat, Hazrat Sumayya radiallahu anha, how she was ripped apart um, in between two camels. Uh, so all these things they started doing. And when the atrocities increased so much, and, you know, uh, uh, some of the Sahaba, they just couldn't, couldn't take it. They came to Rasulullah Sallallahu and Rasulullah Sallallahu he gave them permission to make the first hijrat in Islam, uh, and that was to Abyssinia, Habasha, where they had heard that the king of Abyssinia, whose name was Najashi, uh, he was a very kind-hearted and, uh, and just uh, ruler uh, and so Rasulullah Sassam gave permission and initially the hijrat started uh, by the son-in-law Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. he he and his wife uh, obviously the the daughter of Rasulullah Sassam uh, Bibi Rukhaya uh, she actually joined Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an. and initially the first batch of about 12 people, 12, 13 people, they started the migration. And we also learned that Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, who was unable to face, you know, this punishment which was given to the, the Muslims as they were coming into the fold of Islam, he requested Rasulullah sallallahu uh, also to migrate. And Rasulullah sallallahu gave him permission, but some of the, the tribal leaders, uh, they said, no, you cannot leave us. No, we need you. You are a noble person. You are an honest person. Uh, and you, uh, you are well respected. We can't afford to lose you from our society. So, so he was brought back. And this situation now, some Sahaba slowly migrating to Abyssinia. And, but the punishment and tough circumstances increasing day by day uh, and the uh, the kuffar and mushrikeen they're making plans after plans uh, if you look at it i mean we find that you know uh, they they started punishing and then they started taunting rasulullah sallallahu um, they did everything basically uh, you know, to to somehow or other that he should leave talking towards one Allah Ta'ala. And in the situation, uh, when the, you know, the, this thing increased so much, we find that uh, Hazrat Umar, who was not a Muslim, and he was one of the very brave and courageous people uh, of, of, the, of the Quraysh, he decided to end it all. And he said, well, enough is enough. Uh, he he prepared himself. He took the sword, and he said, "Now the billah that I'm going to go and finish, finish it from the source." Right? He said, "I'm going to go and kill Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So, and he left, and on the way, uh, he, he was informed that you know you should look at your house first, and he was a bit surprised to hear that, uh, and uh, he. He was told that your sister had already accepted Islam. Right. So he, he returned back to his sister's house. And there, you know, uh, when he arrived, he heard the words of the Quran. And that initially had an initial effect on him. You know, they, they were having, in fact, uh, the talim, learning and teaching of the Quran. Hazrat Khabbab bin Arat radiallahu ta'ala, he was teaching the husband and wife. Uh, and uh, he, he went inside by force. 
and he started beating the sister and the brother-in-law uh, and and then uh, when he found that the sister uh, Hazrat Fatma radiallahu anha she she became strong and you know and this is the power of iman you see we find that once uh, once the iman goes inside nothing can take it out you know, that, that's the important thing in fact you know when uh, uh, Hirakal the uh, asked in uh, the Roman Empire, asked uh, Abu Sufyan a number of questions. Uh, one of the questions was that um, once they accept Islam, do they revert back? He said no. Uh, that uh, uh, that once they accept it, they never leave the Islam, no matter how much tough circumstances they face. So he said that is a, a sign of prophethood also. That, uh, you know, when they bring the message and it is the message of truth, once it is in, nothing can take it out. Right? So, um, so, you know, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, he, uh, when he heard the sister that uh, she is so adamant and she said, look, you can do whatever you like. We are not going to leave our Islam now. So he then turned and he said, so in, a, so the environment of Talim, one, one thing which we, is worth noting here, uh, that there was an environment of Talim. Whenever there is an environment of Talim, that has an effect. Because this is words of Quran and Hadith you are reading. So uh, an environment is created of, of goodness around. You know, in hadith also, in fact, it is mentioned that when when a person reads the words of Quran and hadith, then the angels, they start surrounding that area, you know, uh, where the, this talim is going on. So it is, and the angels, you know, we know that the angels, la yasoon Allah ma amarahum, wa yafaluna ma yu'maroon. Allah Ta'ala has made the angels from light and they are innocent. And obedient, so an environment where the, is uh, the angels encircle the halqa of talim, where uh, so it, it imagine that it has been encircled by people who are obedient and who are innocent. So obviously, when you will be in the environment of people who are obedient and innocent, that will have an effect on you. Everything has an effect, you know. Uh, the surrounding. And the environment has an effect on, on a person. So where, that was the environment at that time. When he, and as soon as he, although he entered with wrong intentions, but as soon as he was in that environment, it started affecting Omar. And then he said, okay, tell me what you are reading. Show me. So they said, well, you are unclean. You know, no one can touch Quran. So uh, they said, okay, um, so he, you know, unless you take a, a ghusl, and some riwayat mentioned that he took a ghusl in the sister's house. Some, some, uh, in some riwayat is mentioned that they read out the, you know, the, uh, they, they read the ayat of Surah Taha, innani an Allah la ilaha illa ana fa'abudin. Allah Ta'ala ta is saying, I am Allah, you know. Allah Ta'ala is claiming that I am Allah, you should worship me. You should not worship anyone else except me. You should do my my obedience. Fa'abudni. Aqim wa aqim is salat al So this, when, you know, when these words hit him, and this is the beauty of the Quran. Subhanallah. The, the, the Quran, when it is read, it, it's, mesmerize you you know it, it is actually something which uh, uh, which has a, uh, because it is the kalamullah the kalam of allah ta'ala so when the, he heard this he immediately turned and he said okay uh, take me to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was taken to rasulullah sallallahu where Rasulullah in Darul, Dar, Darul Al-Qami was, was a place where they were 
they used to sit together uh, and they were all all of them were there including Hazrat Hamza and when people saw the Sahaba they saw Omar with fully equipped with sword and everything arriving they thought that he's coming with bad intention but Hazrat Hamza you know the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu he was also a very courageous and strong person uh, and he said look just let him come in uh, if he's coming with the wrong intention uh, then we don't have to worry and I you know I will kill him with his own sword so uh, but obviously uh, Omar was already changed you know the, the Quran and this environment and the sacrifice of the sister had already changed him and he arrived uh, and Rasulullah saw him and in some rewires it's mentioned that you know uh, Rasulullah actually used to make the dua uh, for the Amarain, you know the, the two Umars uh, wa, uh, the Umar bin Khattab and uh, Amar ibn you know the Abu Jahl he was also he had the same name also one of the names so uh, Allah Ta'ala accepted the dua in favor of Hazrat Umar So Hazrat Umar and Rasulullah saw him and he said, has not the time come for Umar to accept Islam? And he said, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna ka Muhammad Rasulullah. So, you know, he accepted Islam and this was a, you know, a great event, in fact, a big event, in fact. Uh, and uh, the Sahaba, they, they, you know, shouted the name of Allah Ta'ala, Takbir, uh, Allahu Akbar. And in, in some rivayat, it's also mentioned that even Jibreel Islam came down and, and, uh, uh, and informed Rasulullah that, you know, the, uh, everyone is rejoicing in the heaven also for Omar to accept Islam. Because one of the greatest enemy, he was, you know, I mean, obviously, he was must have been the, one of the greatest enemy who who had the intention of going out to kill Naudubillah Rasulullah Sallallahu So such a person uh, is now in Islam. So it was a, a, a big strength to the Muslims. And in fact, Hazrat Umar, after becoming Muslim, he he then suggested to Rasulullah Sallallahu and said, Ya Rasulullah Sallam, why are we hiding it? Uh, is the message we have is not is truth? It is haq and truth. So then, how come people who are worshipping idols, they are worshipping openly? And we are worshipping secretly. We have to go out in the open and tell them. You know? And I will make sure that, you know, uh, what if someone wants to confront, then I'm, I'm there in front. So they, after making consultation for the first time, the Muslims, uh, you know, uh, they decided to go in the haram uh, and uh, led by, you know, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, in the middle on one side, Omar, and on the other side, Hazrat Hamza. Uh, and then the Sahaba, all of them, uh, I think almost all about 40, 40, 45 Sahaba who had accepted Islam at that time who were there. They all went you know, uh, in the, for the first time you know, in the haram uh, and uh, all saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad. Imagine the kalima, you know, the kalima they were reading, all of them together, and what sort of environment it must have created. And in fact, it created such an impact that all the kuffar and mushrikeen, they were stunned. Uh, and they couldn't believe what's going on here, you know, all of a sudden. You know, that Hazrat Umar is there, Hazrat Hamza is there, or, uh, as like the two right hand, right and left hand bodyguards of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then all of them shouting the, the name of the greatness of Allah Ta'ala. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allahu Akbar, you know. So Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab, Uzba, uh, Mughira, all, all of them, you know, they... The, all these big leaders of different tribes, they just ran and they said, what's going on here? And when they saw Omar on their side, they just couldn't believe it. They said, you know, Omar has accepted Islam. 
that's not possible you know so so this uh, this situation you know it has uh, created such a big impact uh, and for the first time they were able to uh, and kuffar were very, very disappointed uh, all the mushrikeen and they because all their efforts so far they fell flat and they nothing was working for them so this this is was one of the important uh, in uh, you know incident in the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu uh, the acceptance and you know umar radiyallahu ta'ala he obviously had great abilities you know later on rasulullah sallallahu went on to mention about hazrat umar and of course he then became the second khalifa later on we will learn uh, but rasulullah sallallahu also mentioned that if there was to be a prophet after me it would have been umar so he was that caliber and that uh, that personality uh, uh, and uh, he, you know he had those, those qualities in him uh, so uh, it gave a great strength to the sahaba and meanwhile you know on the other side uh, those who migrated uh, to abyssinia habisha uh, they arrived and they were uh, uh, well treated by najashi the king he did not mind he said well the you know they are coming from our neighboring uh, country so we will, he accepted them with open arms uh, and uh, they were living until you know these mushriki in abu jahl they actually sent a couple of uh, their people um, i think one of them was uh, amr ibn as um, you know the, and uh, so they they said go and tell the uh, the king that uh, you know some of our ignorant people they have entered your land and, and they have left the ways uh, of their forefathers and they are not even following your ways here also so you know they they could be problems for you we have come to take them back with us right so they came and they in fact the kuffar sent them with lot of you know bribes like a lot of uh, gifts and food and different things so they they arrived in habasha abyssinia and then they first of all started uh, getting all the the army people or uh, or the guards on their side by giving them lots of gifts and, and telling them that look you know the uh, some a group of ignorance have uh, have uh, have entered your country and uh, we have come to take them back you have to come support us when we will go and talk to the king and so once they gave them the gifts they they all came and all of them came together in front of uh, the uh, you know najashi the king and then amr bin as you know uh, these two people they they said that uh, oh your highness the we uh, we have come to inform you that some ignorant people from our tribes they have entered your land and they are they have left the ways of their forefathers uh, and now they are not even following your ways and we think that they will create problems for you so uh, we have come to take them back can you hand them over to us so najashi he at, at that because he was you know by nature a very kind hearted person uh, he became angry at this uh, and he then they gave the gifts you know and obviously he immediately realized that these people are trying to bribe him uh, offer him all these gifts so he said that i will never hand them over to you until first of all i want to find out from them uh, what they are saying so they, he asked them to come in front and now the sahaba those who have you know uh, um uh, uh, left those who have arrived there which was usman bin affan radiyallahu anhu and in fact jafar ibn talib uh, hazrat jafar who had accepted islam uh, uh, son of abu talib so th so they asked uh, abu talib to become the uh, jafar uh, radiyallahu anhu to become the mutakallim or he will speak and they they arrived 
and then uh, Najashi, the king, he asked that, look, we, uh, we have these uh, people, they have come, uh, and they are saying this thing, can you tell us uh, what are your ways, what are you following? And Jafar radiallahu ta'ala, and mashallah, at that time he, you know, uh, he, he gave them briefly, the, the king, a brief history of their situation. He said, look, you know, we were living in ignorance, we were fighting each other, we were killing each other, we, we had corruption in us, we were worshipping stones, idols, and so on. Uh, and then all of a sudden, one person in, in our tribe, uh, who was a well-respected and noble person of our tribe, he, he came up and he said that I am the messenger of Allah Ta'ala and I'm bringing revelations to you. And he started telling us uh, the, uh, the ayat of the Quran and that appealed to us and that gave us peace of heart and peace of mind. And so we started following them. And when we started following this, uh, these people, you know, they started punishing us. They started creating obstacles and made our life hell in such a way that uh, we could not survive uh, in our own countries, in our own land. And the, we were forced to, to migrate and come, and that's the situation. So Najashi, he was obviously, you know, he, was, uh, he belonged to Isa alayhi salatu salam, uh, the, the, you know, Nasrani religion. Uh, and they were obviously uh, descendant from uh, Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, uh, and following the Bible and so on. So he knew what the messages from Allah Ta'ala is because they were also following that. So, so he asked them, uh, do, you, do you have anything which th he has told you, the, this messenger? Uh, do you remember anything? Uh, can you read out some of the messages which he has given you? And Jafar radiallahu ta'ala, at that point, you know, he started, alhamdulillah, reading Surah Maryam. Right? And Surah Maryam is where Allah ta'ala is telling all about Isa alayhi salam and uh, the mother Maryam uh, and so on. So when he started reading this, Najashi, you know, and all the people, all the ulama and scholars they had, or Nasrani scholars, they were sitting. They suddenly, you know, obviously the Quran, the words of the Quran, uh, and, you know, Surah Maryam is such a beautiful surah also. Uh, when they started hearing, in fact, it is mentioned that the Najashi started crying. And all the scholars, they started crying. And they... Uh, they started crying and crying so much after hearing this uh, Surah Maryam. Such, such beautiful verses. It had such a big impact on them. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, uh, and he said that, uh, you know, and then obviously he's telling, us, uh, telling them also about uh, Isa alayhi salatu salam, that he was a, a slave of Allah Ta'ala, and he, Allah Ta'ala in the Quran is saying that he is the slave of Allah Ta'ala, he is the ruh, and he is the kalima. You know, these three things have been mentioned in the Quran about Isa alayhi salatu salam. So he, he read out those ayat, and Najashi accepted and said, uh, whatever I have heard uh, from your Quran about Isa alayhi salam and uh, the mother is absolutely correct and true. So when he said that, some of the scholars, Nasrani scholars, obviously because they believed Isa al Islam to be the son of God, right? So he, they said, they became a bit angry on uh, the king when he said, uh, and he said that, you know, uh, I accept what you are reading. And he, he told the, the army and the soldiers and guards, that uh, collect all the gifts which these people have brought, give it back to them, and tell them to get out of our land. We will never hand over these people to you. Right? So, 
So some of these reports, in fact, uh, this has been narrated by uh, Umm Salma, radiallahu ta'ala anha, who, who mentioned that uh, this is how it happened in, in Habasha. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and so they were kicked out, disgraced, in fact, uh, and they, they went back. Uh, and Najashi actually, you know, he was so affected that it's mentioned that uh, Ibn Hisham has mentioned, in fact, in the Siratul Nabi uh, book, that uh, he wrote down, uh, you know, uh, on a piece of paper, because now he had to answer to his uh, uh, scholars, and uh, they were a bit upset about, you know, him saying that Isa al Islam is uh, the messenger of Allah and not the son of God. So he wrote down on the piece of paper that. Uh, there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And Muhammad, I accept Muhammad Rasulullah to be the last prophet. And uh, I, uh, I accept Isa alayhi salatu Jesus to be the, uh, the, you know, the messenger and ruh and kalima of Allah Ta'ala. He wrote this on a piece of paper and he then put it in his pocket. Right? Uh, now, and then he came in front of all the uh, the uh, scholars and uh, you know uh, and so the scholars they uh, they were a bit upset they said to him that look uh, you have left uh, the religion your religion and you have accepted their religion and we don't like this because you are our leader and we have to make sure that uh, uh, it's, uh, you know you follow uh, the right way Otherwise, we, you know, uh, they, they said that we are going to uh, overthrow you, basically, right? Uh, uh, and so Najashi, he was very, you know, full of hikmah and basirat. He was a very wise king. He, he asked them, okay, tell me, uh, what do you propose? What should we be worshipping? Uh, what, what we should be following? So they said, you know, we, we follow the God and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You know, the, the, the Trinity, they said uh, that, that, that Jesus is the Son of God. So when, he, when they all said that, uh, Najashi very cleverly, he put his hand on the, the piece of paper where he had put in his pocket. Uh, and he said to all of, in front of all of them, that whatever... Uh, Whatever is here, whatever has been said here, uh, whatever is here, uh, I accept that 100%. And he was relating it to the piece of paper which he had written in his pocket. And they understood it to be what they had just mentioned that he is accepting that. So they all became very happy and they, they accepted him back uh, as the king uh, and, and he ruled over. And during, so this is how the, uh, the in the, uh, in Abyssinia and Havisha, the Muslims, in fact, more and more started coming. In the Riwayah, this mentioned that almost, I think, probably around 80 or 85, 83, 83 people altogether, they actually migrated to Abyssinia. Uh, and this is how, basically, so this is also a very important aspect of the Sirat, uh, the, the first Hijrat, in fact you know, uh, in Islam, uh, which took place. Uh, and, uh, and in some riwayat, it's mentioned, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, in fact, mentions that when Najashi actually died, um, because he had accepted Islam, uh, nur and light was seen on the grave of Najashi. So because he had accepted Islam, uh, but he kept it hidden from the, the people, uh, and inshallah more will be mentioned about this uh, 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 so this is in fact the time is up uh, where we have to inshallah continue next week um, and um, so you know Omar radiallahu ta'ala in uh, Makkah has given strength to the, uh, the Sahaba and Rasulullah and here Najashi has helped the, so but still tough times are coming towards uh, the Sahaba and Rasulullah The first 13 years we find of Makkan life, this was, you know, uh, full of 
difficulties and and sacrifices uh, which the Sahaba and Rasulullah Sallam had to give several attempt on his uh, to assassinate him. Uh, his his uh, daughters and his family was mistreated, and of course all the Sahaba they were they went through very hard time. Inshallah, may Allah Taala give us the ability <coughs> to Inshallah. You know, we are lucky, Alhamdulillah, that we are not facing any tough times and difficulty. So it is very important for us to adhere to the Sunnah way of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa akhiru dana, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Subhanallah, wa bihamdi, Subhanakallahu, wa bihamdi, kana shadu Allah illa illa anta. Nastaghfiru ka wa natubu ilayk. Nastaghfiru ka wa natubu ilayk. Nastaghfiru ka wa natubu ilayk. Subhana Rabbi ka Rabbi lizati amma yasifun. وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله السلام عليكم